Hello and welcome and Happy New Year 2019 to all my viewers and subscribers. So today we are going to continue with the section 1 of the part 7 of the 8 part series on Razor Pages with Entity Framework Core in ASP.NET Core. So for those um, subscribers or viewers who, has, who have missed any of the previous 6 sections, my strong recommendation is to please go through the them and complete them and do it on a Visual Studio to follow the tutorial from end to end. And for keeping this tutorial short, this part is also divided into two sections. And in this section one, we will create a base class to share common code, customize the course pages and add as no tracking to the details and delete page models. Now, um, in this, this is one of the completed pages that's what how it will look like now the department is selected by its primary key and integer not its name now we will first edit the new course and when we have finished testing we'll delete the new course so we'll head straight to the visual studio and on the application with control f5 So let's click the courses tab, create a new one, give it any number, one, 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 two, title. Let me ad abbreviate artificial intelligence with AI. Oh, see the data annotation. So the title must be a string with minimum length of three and a maximum length of 50. So I'll have to, it will not allow me to create unless I obey the rules of the validation, which is minimum three characters. So artificial intelligence is the full form. And let me say the credit is eight credit. Again, the credits must be between zero and five. So make it five. That's data annotation in action. All right. So I don't know the department as yet. So I'll just give it an arbitrary say ID of three, two, and create it. So this is artificial intelligence. Now I can see the details. Then go to edit. I can make it say four credits, change the department to say three department and save it. So there it is. All these changes are reflected and I will now delete it and move on to the next part. Okay. So now the instructor page will look like the, this adjacent figure after the completion of both the sections. Mind you, after having completed this section and the next section of the part 7. Now, heading back straight to the Visual Studio 2017, I will create a base class to share common code. So, then back to this and then I have got a code from the Microsoft documentation and I will create on the courses folder a class, add a class and name it department name page model. So department name page model. Right. So in this department name page model, I will highlight all the generated code and write it over with the code that I have on my clipboard. Now here I see that there is a school context type of name, space name school context could not be found. Are you missing uh, using directive or an assembly reference? 
So show potential fixes. What are the fixes? So using this using was missing. So it has automatically added using Contoso University dot models, which was the namespace required to make it happy. Now this code this creates a select list to contain the list of department names. Now if the selected department is specified, that department is selected in the selected list. Going back to the code, so this is a select list department name SL. Now as we said, the, if the selected department is specified, that department is selected in the select list. More of that later when you test it. Now the create and edit page model classes will derive from the this class name page department name page model. Head on to the next slide. Now we will create, I will customize the courses page rather. So when a new course entity is created, it must have a relationship to an existing department. So can a course exist without a department? No. So it has to have an existing department. Now to add a department while creating a course, the base class for create and edit contains a drop down list. Now that is the finished you know, screenshot. So it should have a department list with a prompt select department. So economics engineering, so there could be more or you know departments. Now the drop down list sets the course dot department ID foreign key property. Entity framework code uses the course dot department ID foreign key to load the department navigation property. Right. Now we'll update the create page model with the code. So heading back to the Visual Studio. Um, so we have covered this one. Uh, yes, so create page model that is create dot cshtml dot cs this file. I will copy it over from the clipboard code. I highlight everything as usual. So control A and control V. Now again it is not liking this and show the potential fixes. What are the potential fixes? Generate class school context new, new file, generate new type. So it is not going to work that way. And because I have done it already, I know that you know you need a model. Contoso University dot models namespace, which is already here on the top. So this is the namespace that it is using for the school context from my previous experience. So I'll get rid of Contoso University dot data and leave the school context as it is. And here also I will just get rid of this namespace for fully qualifying namespace and leave it at school context. Right. So those squiggly lines are gone. So the compiler is happy. Now in this code also there are a few changes and we will study them. So now this code derives from the department name page model. So how it is? Um, if you look in the top, so this create model is now de deriving from the department name page model which you have just uh, constructed. Now it uses try update model async to prevent overposting. So we'll talk about overposting in another lecture. So it uses try update model sync to prevent overposting, whatever that is. We we'll leave it for a next lecture, for, for another lecture. Now it replaces view data department ID with department name SL. So department name SL. Populate department drop down list. So what is this is derived from the base class which is here popular department drop down list and it used department name SL. 
right now view data department id is replaced with the strongly typed department name sl strongly typed models are preferred over weakly typed now for more information i have given some links on the video description for the url so you can study the uh, strongly typed and weakly typed you know concepts right now next we'll update the courses create.cshtml or the view page with the markup as per the documentation all right so now getting back to create.cshtml that's this page and i'll again highlight everything control a and paste it from the keyboard code right okay now this changes these are certain changes and here we are changing the caption from department id to department previously if you look into the code before changing it was using department id now we have changed it to department here courses dot course dot department and now it has also replaced view back dot department id with the department name sl from the base class so model dot department name sl and which was the model model was this department name page model right now this is also adds the select department option this is the select department option we'll see soon everything in action now it has also adds added a validation message when the department isn't selected so where is the validation message span asp validation form course dot department id when the department is not selected it will send a validation message to the screen now we'll test the create page and the create page will display the department name rather than the department id so all good control f5 to run the application again the application page is loaded in the browser now i'll click on create new there you are department select department now i have got all these department listed nicely as opposed to the department ids before which would make it useless for me as a user because i would not know which each of these um, ids will be represented by which, which of these you know actual department next is now we'll update the course edit page okay so again we'll follow the documentation update the course edit page so i have got it again on my notepad so i'll head straight to the visual studio and course edit page i'll go for the edit.cshtml.cs so just like i did it for the create page i'll do it for the edit page so highlight everything and then paste from my keyboard now again we'll see that you know there is a couple of squiggly lines which you if you recall earlier it was due to the contos university dot data although it was from the models so there was a mistake in the microsoft documentation i must admit and i have told them to correct it but anyway we will correct it from our side uh, i'll just like how i did earlier with the create page i will just get rid of the fully qualified name space and leave it as school context and it will take care because i have already included contos university dot models right so 
Now these changes are similar to those made it made in the create page model as you would understand or you will I mean infer in the preceding code the populate department's drop down list passes in the department ID and which selects the department specified in the drop down list. Now I will have to next do the update for the CSHTML page or the markup page. So what I will do, I will go to the edit.cshtml which is uh, and then I have copied my code again for the cshtml page, edit view, uh, control A, highlight everything and control V to paste. There are certain changes which we will discuss now. Before that, we will try to run this application and build this application with control shift B as hotkey. Everything is fine, then we will move on. So build succeeded, that's good. Now getting back to the slideshow. Now this preceding markup makes the following changes. Displays the course ID. Generally the primary keys of are usually meaningless to users. In this case primary key is the course number however. Now it changes the depart caption from department ID to department and replaces the viewback.department ID with the department name SL from the base class. All right, so we'll just study it in a bit. So if you look into this change markup, now I will just um, highlight these parts. Now this is course dot course ID and caption from department ID to here department. And view back dot department ID was replaced again with at model dot department in SL from the base class. Now this another thing is to see is that it has got a hidden field input type hidden because we don't want to display the course ID uh, and adding a label tag helper with ASP for. equals course dot course id doesn't eliminate the need for the hidden field. So input type hidden is required for the course number to be included in the posted data. So although we won't like to display it on the browser, but it, it needs to be sent and when the user clicks save and it has to be included in the, right. Now we'll test the updated code, create edit and delete course. Okay. So I think I have got the course already running. So all I will do is to go back to Visual Studio and click on, you know, just rebuild it and will succeed it. So again, getting back to this browser, we'll create a course. You can test it and I think it will be the same thing. Uh, where it is? Course number again. Any arbitrary number. Okay. If it is, it needs to be four digits, so just four digit number. Say statistics. Credits, two credits, or three credits, or anything. And it will be in the mathematics department. So click on mathematics and create. So statistics is created. Now we can edit, make it say four credits. Click on save. Okay. And we will now see the details and see the details, everything, title, credit, department and back to the list. 
and then you delete this course okay right so the final thing today is the final thing for today is add as no tracking to the details and delete so what does that mean now as no tracking can improve performance when tracking is not required we will now add as no tracking to the delete and details page why the delete and details page because they don't need to be tracked so every time an item a row is deleted it doesn't need to be tracked because you are not saving it you are just deleting and the details page model is also is just retrieving the data from the database so anything which doesn't involves you know saving to the database you can get rid of the add as no tracking method so we and we start with the updated delete page model and next update the on gets async method in the pages course details.cshtml okay so modify the delete and details page with first doing the update on the delete razor page and do it similar to the details page okay so going back to the code straight away um, okay so I will do the delete page first so where is the delete page model delete.cshtml.cs just copy the code from my clipboard Bye. so I'll highlight the class and copy it over from the clipboard code and then get rid of this Contoso University data, which is again uh, wrongly typed in the actual Microsoft document on which this course is based. But however, we know it, so again, and we can save the file. Now we have already done it for the delete page and then we will go to the details page and do the similar things. So details.cshtml.cs yeah. So copy the code from the Microsoft documentation on get async. That only needed to be changed. Now finally I will have to update the delete razor pages and the details razor pages so first of all delete dot html and then highlight everything and paste from the clipboard okay so there is a heading header are you sure you want to delete this that's fine so the only changes are these course id post dot course id and similarly i will do it for the details page so uh, details dot cshtml now you can see that that dt within dt and ndt it is course dot course title so i will go get back to the de delete view and copy these two blocks of code copy and get back to the details page and on top make those changes right so now we are ready to test the course page again so for one final test so i'll just build it again Will succeeded. All right. So, great courses. Now, a refresh the browser. We have to create, edit, details, date. Everything we test. 
create new number any arbitrary number as i've said 4567 can choose any other arbitrary number doesn't matter it is actually a primary key and the number is so here you are giving the course number which is acting as a primary key for this so say data science credits say five credits and select the department let's say engineering and then create data science so edit make this department as mathematics save it details data science credit 5 department 2 and then back to the list and then delete yeah that's it thanks for watching see you next time bye